I recently saw a tweet of someone who wanted to marry Crom Fire Emblem, and you know what, that's relatable. Who wouldn't want to be held in his wonderful arms? But that got me thinking, for Crom to marry, he has to come to our world, and that means he's got to play by our rules. Crom needs to find a job, and I believe he should get a fast food job. I don't have a a good reason as to why it has to be fast food, but I worked fast food for two years, so come on now, feel my pain. Besides, wouldn't it be cool to meet Crom Fire Emblem at your local subway? Anyways, that thought got me thinking, would Crom be a good co-worker? Would any of the main Fire Emblem lords and protagonists be good co-workers? And that is what I'll be deciding today. Hey everyone, I'm the Exalt High, and let's figure out who is the best Fire Emblem Lord co-worker. But first, let's set the ground rules with what makes a good co-worker. Even though I have about two years of experience, I wanted to get a second opinion, so I asked my friend who's currently working at Chipotle, and we worked out two important qualities. One, is that co-worker fun to work with? Can you look at the schedule and think, oh yeah, I get to work with uh, Peter Parker, that guy's super fun. This quality is about can you share a joke with them? A meme on your phone? How about hanging out with them outside of work? Fast food jobs are where your hope for humanity goes to die, but can this person keep it alive? On the opposite side of the spectrum, is this person a deadbeat? Are they lame and just not fun to hang out with? Their vibes are off. Worst case scenario, they make you feel uncomfortable and that's not good. For the second quality, how good are they at the job? This accounts for everything cooking, cleaning, customer service, etc. Can they get things done? When you close for the nights, will you be able to leave early because this person is phenomenal with their cleaning, or are you going to be late? With that, here is the Fire Emblem Coworker Compass Chart. The area to the bottom left is where all the lame people who suck at their job are going to be. If you see yourself within this area, I want you to consider, how can you improve? Unless you're at a fast food chain, in which case, don't change to better the company. They most likely don't care. But you should change for your coworkers, because you're both stuck in a job where some people consider you lower than human, and you should be there for each other. The top left is all the people who are insanely good at their job, but are also just the worst people to work with. They might be super cold to you and never laugh or smile, but when they work in the back, you know that the orders will never be messed up with them on the job. So it, it kind of balances out. The bottom right are all the people who you will have an absolute blast hanging out with, but they uh, tend to mess up on the job a lot. Sometimes that's frustrating, but like they're so endearing, so you gotta forgive them. The top right has all the people who are amazing to work with and are amazing workers. Their vibe is so on point and you know it's going to be a good day when you have a shift with them. Now that I've established everything, let's start ranking. Now I'm going to be as biased as I can and hold nothing back. Most Fire Emblem Lords are good people because that's just how they're written, so I'm going to exaggerate a bit. Let's start with Marth. He's the prime example of a fun guy and a good working guy. He's got this leadership aura about him, and even though you and him started at the same time, he's getting the promotion to shift manager, but you're okay with that because it feels right. So he gets to be right here. Alm is not a fan of wage theft, and working at Burger King has radicalized him. That's what we call a comrade, so he gets to be super fun. And I, I guess he's good at his job-ish, but he and Selka tend to have this weird urge to destroy pots whenever they go to the back storage. Selka is a good person, but she's very distant. She's willing to help out, but it's difficult to warm up to her, and a lot of her choices tend to have poorly explained reasons. I have not yet played Mystery on the Emblem, so I don't know where to put Chris on the fun scale, but I do know that they're terrible at cooking and you can't serve poisonous food to customers. Sigurd is incredibly charming and he likes to talk about his dear wife and kid a lot. He's one of the best co-workers with tons of stories to tell. Chill parents are like the best. The only weird thing is that sometimes when he's working with a fire like cooking, he says he's got a bad feeling about it, but that's not that detrimental. Selif is generally a good kid, but he likes to talk about his dad a little too much. 
He's not very good at breaking the ice whenever he meets new co-workers and he struggles whenever a customer starts having a conversation with them. But, you know, that's normal and painfully relatable. So I'm not going to knock off points for that. I have not played Thracia 776, so I don't know where to put Leaf. So he's, he's going to be the true neutral. Roy is somewhat fun to work with, you know, but he sucks at his job. However, when he puts his two weeks in, just like the Binding Blade Endgame, he suddenly becomes the best co-worker of all time. He's like a god of fast food service. Part of you thinks, wow, that's incredible. And the other part thinks, if you could be so good, why were you so bad before? I don't have a, a joke for Ellie Wood, except for the fact that uh, I guess he's, he's kind of similar to Marth, so they'll be right next to each other. Hector is loud, boisterous, and passionate about his friends. He's fun to be around. Uh, but the only issue is that he doesn't have the best self-control and some Karen or Kyle is going to insult his co-workers and he's going to tackle them. I'm not saying that some customers don't deserve that, but you shouldn't tackle a customer. I love Lynn. Uh, she's so cool and everyone, and I mean everyone, regardless of gender orientation, worships Lynn. She stands up for workers' rights, amazing on the job, and is... She's not real. Damn. Unfortunately, I have not played Sacred Stones. I, I never found the time or motivation for it. Maybe if I stream it, maybe then. So I'll go based on what I know of the twins from Heroes. Ephraim is a little difficult to approach, so he's not the most fun person. But if Brave Ephraim has taught me anything, it's that he's very good. Erica is a wonderful soul, and you wish so badly that she found a better job. Ike is blunt and he makes it very awkward when you tell a joke or a funny story and he doesn't laugh so he's not the most fun co-worker even if you do warm up to him but i'm gonna put him a little bit down here not because ike is a bad person but because of his famous quote i fight for my friends that's charming and great but that means he's gonna fight the customer now fights between customers and employees are okay uh ish because other customers and employees can jump in and pull them apart. But in Ike's case, I don't think there's a person strong enough to pull him back, and that's not good. Micaiah can heal you when some oil burns you, so she's really awesome. She even learned first aid even though she doesn't need it. Sometimes during the slow periods of drive through she talks to a bird. At, at first, you think that's really weird, but for all of you who have worked in fast food or retail or any customer service job, that is not the weirdest thing you'll see. Besides, it's not like talking to a bird is bad anything. The biggest thing is that, well, if Radiant Dawn has taught me anything, it's to trust in 313 Archer and that the Dawn Brigade is, is not good. So Micaiah moves down a bit. Now we get to the beginning of this video, Krom. He's a big old himbo idiot and we all love him. He's got some traits like eating oranges with the peel on, and you know, maybe we should start doing that too. But the reason why he's low here is because he was cooking the patties in the back, and somehow with a spatula, he destroyed the stove. And you saw that as you were walking to the back, and the first thing that comes to mind is, what the hell, how did you do that, teach me? And the second thought is, what the hell, how do I explain this to the manager? Lucina, being Krom's daughter, also inherited some destructiveness, but she's better at controlling it. Doesn't change the fact that she broke the fryer and there's a lot of customers asking for french fries. Whoopsies. Lucina doesn't do well with bugs, and the thing about fast food is that there are bugs. Because, you know, you're working with food, of course there are going to be bugs. Lucina isn't the best with bugs, and you hope that she finds a better job. Robin took this job very seriously, and amazingly enough, they got promoted and kept rising up in the company. Unfortunately, they couldn't get higher than the regional manager, because while you need some new and wild ideas, there are limits to the lengths you should go. But they're good enough to be top right, so yeah. Corin, just like Erica, you sincerely hope they find a better job. Corin is a, a good person and nice to be around, however, they're not fast food material, you know? You ever meet someone and think, yeah, they're just not gonna do well. That's basically Corin. You remember when I said your hope for humanity dies with fast food? Well, yeah, 
The war between Hoshido and Nora couldn't break Korn, but I bet this job will. At first, I was going to make Byleth a true neutral, but honestly, they do a good job as a teacher, so they can be a little bit up here. It is a little bit depressing that a teacher has to work a second job because apparently some assholes way up the government chain decided that teachers weren't worth it. We need to bring them down. And that brings us to Edelgard. She hates a lot of governmental figures and the teacher thing is just another reason for her to run for office. It doesn't matter if it's Foblin or Our World, she's here to fight and, and to eat at Wendy's. So not only does she get to be on the fun side, she's pretty good at working. Let's move her up here actually. Dimitri is a wonderful young man and he laughs at all of your jokes so the atmosphere is always fun. However, he broke the McDonald's ice cream machine, like crushed it completely with his bare hands. And what are you supposed to say to that? Are your hands okay? Are you hurt? Don't worry about fixing the machine that's above our pay grade? Claude has a wonderful vibe about him and literally no customer has gone dangerously angry with him up front. They come in frustrated and once they start talking to him, they kind of let it all go. Even customers who are having a bad day and are really moody, they will say thank you and smile. That's incredible. So he gets to be right here. And that is the Fire Emblem Lord and Protagonist ranking based on how good of a coworker they would be. It's interesting to see that most of them are either fun and good at the job or they're fun and terrible at this job. There's very few people who are bad at both. Subscribe, leave a like, and comment below your thoughts on this ranking, and who would you want to move around? Let's talk about some behind the scenes. There's not that much though. The idea for this came when I was still working in fast food, but I never acted on it until now. When I asked my friend about what makes a good coworker, I think she was super confused, but just went with it, because honestly, that's probably not the weirdest thing and out of context thing I've asked, you know? The biggest inspiration for this video was Krom, of course, but also Dimitri. I thought it'd be hilarious for them to come to our world and accidentally destroy things that normal humans can't. But with all that, stay hydrated folks and have a good day.